Hey guys, it's Rob from Synop Media. I thought I'd do a quick video on a uh, little behind the scenes edit of my friend's 86 here. Um, he's just got it bagged recently and yeah, it looks really good. So um, we just caught up and took a few photos. Um, now this video is mainly going to be about um, removing objects, just cleaning up the image in general. Um, I've already done my color and my contrast and uh, all that kind of stuff in Lightroom, um, so this is like a final step. Um, now one tip from Lightroom though is if you are planning to edit in Photoshop, um, don't add any sharpening in Lightroom because the Lightroom sharpening is not too good um, and you just have more control this way. So don't add any sharpening at all, um, look at your luminance, maybe um, add some noise reduction in Lightroom because it is good for that. Um, but apart from that, yeah, don't add, don't add sharpening. Um, because if you are going to remove objects and play with things in Photoshop, it's better to do it on the flat um, image straight out of camera and then add sharpening to all of it at the end so it blends together well. Um, otherwise, if you try and like, if you have a sh an image that's already had all the sharpening done and you try and add things or move things around, uh, it's going to stand out more. Um, so yeah, it's better just do that at the end overall if you are going to edit in Photoshop. Um, but yeah, so mainly we're going to get rid of uh, all the lines uh, in the image and uh, the dustbins over here, maybe some light, uh, some uh, electricity poles, some stuff on the ground, then we're going to touch the car up just a little bit. Uh, and the same with these ones, so I'll just show you how I do that, uh, just to clean up the image. Like A lot of people would post this as it is, um, but it's going to make a huge difference and it's just going to look a lot, a lot cleaner uh, and make you stand out just that little bit extra uh, on Instagram from cleaning it up. So first of all, uh, I'm going to get a new layer because I don't want to edit the original. Just in case I stuff something up, I can always uh, mask it out and go back to the original. Uh, and it's also good to do that because then you can kind of see like a before and after. Um, so yeah, we got a new layer, new copy, and I'm just going to edit onto this. So. Um, what I like to use the most is the patch tool. You can use the spot healing, uh, the healing brush, or the stamp tool. They all work pretty well. Um, but I find the patch tool kind of, like they all have their different circumstances and I'll probably use a few of them in this edit. Um, but I think that the patch tool works probably one of the best because you can choose where you're copying from um, to replace this part, for example. So. Uh, we're going to go here. This is it's going to be very rough. I'm not really particular. Uh, and then usually if it's a small thing you like this, you could copy just from below it or above it. Um, but it's best to try and go to the side. Um, just because on your image you'll have um, your different focus points and your depth of field. Um, so obviously here it's going to be really blurry. Here it's going to be sharp. And then it's going to get blurry again back here. And if you take something, for example, even this line, if we take this and replace it back here, um, it's usually going to have a blurry patch and stand out. Whereas if you take it from next door, it won't. Um, you don't want like a really sharp patch, uh, for example, in here. So you don't want to take something from here uh, to add to here to get get rid of something. So yeah, try and go sideways in the image if you can. Otherwise you can do it in small steps. Like this line goes straight through um, from the out of focus area to the sharp area so I can just go sideways and it'll blend through, it'll be fine. But you couldn't really like, if you took it from there you got one sharp patch um, around the blurry bit so it just doesn't look, you know, it stands out, you can see that something's wrong. Uh, and that's why I like using this tool because you can choose uh, a lot of times if you use like the healing brush tool it's okay for um, small little spots like this but anything bigger it tends to just blend it all together and merge it and make it blurry so if I did it on this line um, there's a pretty good chance it'll usually just um, have like a less sharp patch it gets more obvious the more you do with it as well so the patch tool is just a lot cleaner and it's just really easy And 
Anyway, now I've explained all that. Start doing some edits. Uh, it gets tricky. The only part where it struggles is if you do have like darker patches like under here. Because um, it does try and blend. Um, so it's clean all through here. We'll get rid of these. But you'll see if I try and do it to this, we can't do that because it's going to drag that shadow out. Um, and it just doesn't look right. And some cases will look a lot worse than others. So when it's like, when you do have uh, something like that, you can drag it down along the shadow if you can, uh, and it can help. Otherwise you might end up having to go with a clone stamp. Um, so that worked, I wouldn't clone stamp, but just to show you, you can uh, clone stamp and you hold down Alt on PC, click where you want to copy it from. And then, so eventually, essentially it's just like copying and it shows you where it's copying from, like literally everything. So you can choose this point and you could have just copied it over and got rid of it that way. But yeah, if the patch tool works, I use the patch tool. Because it also seems to, um, and you'll probably see it on maybe the next edit um, of this one. The patch tool will get rid of um, any kind of textures you don't want, but it will also keep um, the color accurate. So it'll blend the color in. So if you have like a red patch on the ground from the tail lights, it'll keep that patch red, but it'll get rid of you know the texture you're trying to get rid of. So it's really smart like that. So you can see already, before, after, it's just a lot cleaner. Stuff like this uh, can be tricky, like when something is overlapping with another object. Like if this grate was on its own out here, you could just get rid of it. Uh, because it is kind of overlapping with the car, this is where you can't just use the patch tool. Um, so for this, I probably will go clone stamp and I'll get some of the ground from out here along the same uh, line of like depth of field so it's uh, the same kind of focus, focus point. Make it a bit harder. And just, the main thing is to get the outline of the car. If it's just for Instagram or like something like this, it doesn't have to be perfect. But that's pretty good now. Like you'd have to be zooming right in, and then even then, you probably wouldn't notice that something's happened. So yeah, copying from away. Uh, you want to keep in mind because it does when you do copy this way with the clone stamp. Uh, it does travel it doesn't just copy this spot um, everywhere it will travel with it as you can see um, so if you choose a patch um, you know if you know you need to go from here to here you choose a patch here uh, and there's something else in the way it'll end up copying that over and just making it messy for example if I copied here and I wanted to get rid of something here it would end up being the bumper or whatever uh, was there. Very small line here. I just moved it. Something like this, you can just use the clone step. The only reason I don't use the clone stamp all the time, even though it is a bit um, more accurate for copying stuff over, is it is very harsh and a lot of times you can see. Um, like the patch tool just blends things back together a lot better. And it also randomizes it a bit, whereas the clone stamp, if you're not careful, you will end up with, um, people can clearly see it's a repeat 
part of the image over and over again in different spots. Whereas this uh, seems to blend a lot better. And it also blends yeah, in a way that doesn't make the edges um, blurry or anything bad like that. It's very clean. If you have a long line and you start doing the small edge first like this, I'll show you what you can do to save a lot of time. You go along, I'm not going to go all the way to the car because I'm going to have to use the clone stamp for that most likely. Um, and then it will snap back to this, you can just let go so you don't have to draw all the way along again. Um, and with this I don't have an option to go sideways so I'm just going to have to go down a bit. As you can see, it's not always perfect, so sometimes you do have to blend it in yourself a little bit more. I'm going to try this with the patch tool. But it did drag, as I mentioned, it keeps colour. It did kind of drag that yellow out still a little bit. clone stamp choose out here somewhere and when you do clone stamp make sure it's the same kind of color you can see this gray darker gray comes all the way along here um, whereas if we went to the white patch it you just have a big white patch here it stand out so we're gonna go with the gray patch just so it blends in a bit better That's gone as well. Pretty easy. Might be a little bit boring watching me do this, but um, I don't want to fast forward it just in case there's any um, little tips that I can give along the way like that. Gets rid of the line, but it still keeps that texture in the shadow, which is good. And it just comes down to how much time you want to spend making it perfect. It doesn't really matter too much uh, to me if it's not perfect because I know no one's really going to notice it, if I can't even notice it. Sometimes I'll spend a lot of time, uh, if it's for a publication or uh, something like that. So with this, this is going to be really hard to get rid of because does there's no clean line um, like if this was a concrete wall you could just copy um, the concrete over because it's not a clean line and it's got all shadows and stuff it is quite tricky uh, these probably are honestly one of the hardest things to get rid of even in um, underground car parks or anything like that an easy uh, thing to do just to get your attention away from it as to make a new layer uh, make it a color layer for this one because it's blue for example um, now while you're on the pen tool uh, the brush tool sorry um, if you hold alt it'll copy a color so we're going to alt click here and that'll make it uh, the same color and on the color layer we're just going to drag it across uh, and that's just going to get rid of the blue so i'm going to leave it there just for this um, it is just, you know, modified car, Instagram photo, doesn't matter too much, just to save some time. And just check the reflection as well. And uh, this way it just, you know, it won't catch your eye, it won't stand out as much. It's not like a line going through the, uh, 
through the ground or anything like that. So you go, it stands out a lot less. Before, after. Looking a lot cleaner. And then the only other thing I'd probably remove is maybe um, this pole up here. It doesn't really matter too much, it doesn't stand out a lot. But definitely if you got any poles or anything like this coming out of the car, um, click on that layer, you definitely want to get rid of them. You don't want anything kind of sticking out of the car. Anything like this, it doesn't matter too much, but it's easy so I'm going to get rid of it anyway. power lines. So because this guy is all white, it's all basically one thing, I'm just going to go with the um, clone tool, just click somewhere on the sky and just watch, see how it copied that. So you might need to adjust what point you're copying from just to get rid of the uh, power lines. There we go, all that's gone. It's a bit cleaner, hey? Um, and then you could just leave it at that. I'm going to get rid of it a bit more just because I can. And then just have a look at the image and see if anything kind of distracts you. I um, really like this bit of yellow back here. Stands out a little bit. I don't usually go into this much detail, but Back to the color layer. I'm just going to get rid of the color on it. You could get rid of all of it, but I'm not too worried. But yeah, I don't normally go into that much detail, but just to show you guys what you should do and what you could do, uh, we'll do that. Cool. So that's a lot cleaner. Um, I'd say that you know that's cleaned up now, really. Um, We'll just zoom into the car now and have a look at the car itself. There's like a little, either a scratch or some some bugs or something that's uh, hit the car. It could just be some some mud or some dirt. So we'll get rid of that. And yeah, just have a look around at the car and see if there's anything that you can clean up on it. Any little bits of dirt, stone chips. Sometimes you can get rid of these if you really want to clean it up. Um, it's, I guess, personal preference. I don't normally do it. Sometimes I do. You could even debadge it if you wanted to. Um, just depends how much you want to, you know, change their car as well. Now with the headlight, um, you always get this coloration, um, especially if you're using a CPL filter. So when you go back to the color layer again that I had. And I'm probably just going to go, if you just choose black or white, it's going to completely desaturate it. Um, so we'll just go over this. And just get rid of this uh, kind of color cast from the plastic and the oils. You can see here, this was at 1.4, I've got a tiny bit of chromatic aberration um, around the contrast points because I haven't got I didn't get rid of that in Lightroom um, now Windows this has like a bluey green tint to it um, that's obviously one it's the tint of the windshield um, the CPL and also the blue sky so I'm gonna make another layer and make it a color layer again and uh, same thing, I'm going to desaturate it, but I'm going to tone it back a bit, so I'm not going to completely desaturate it. But first I'm going to go over it all anyway. And then I'll turn the opacity down, just so there's still a bit of colour, but it doesn't have such a crazy blue cast over the windshield. 
once again, you don't have to do this. Uh, but try it. it, honestly it does look better. It's a very small difference, like people probably wouldn't point it out once it's done. But it does um, make the image look a bit cleaner once again. So that's all black before, that's after, and then we're just going to adjust the opacity just so there's still a bit of color in it, but it's not too blue. So maybe like for this example, about 50%. Now it's you know it's it's all about blending the colors together. Like nothing else is blue in this image apart from that wind windscreen. So getting rid of the blue on the windscreen really just brings that color palette down again. Um, you know, it, with an image you really want um, a limited color. You don't want too many colors, especially if they don't belong. Like if the sky was blue, I would have left it because it would look weird because nothing else is blue. I'm getting rid of that, just uh, cleans it up a little bit more. You can also do it on black cars as well. If you're shooting a black car and it's got heaps of color cast, uh, you can go over the whole car. Um, obviously just the black paint, you don't want to go anything over anything that has color. Um, but you can make that completely black and white and then just turn the opacity back just a little bit. Um, so there's still like a color cast on it, but it's mostly black. And that'll make it look a lot cleaner as well. So, to be honest, that's pretty good for me for uh, Instagram as before. It's pretty messy. It's a nice photo, but you know, it is really messy. And then after, it's just really clean. Before. After. Um, this was still pretty bright, like the sun was starting to set, uh, but if it was a little bit later, you can see the tail lights are on. And that's the other thing, always kind of have them to have their parkers on and their tail lights, because uh, it just adds a little bit more um, to draw your eye into the car. But if this was a little bit later, then there would be some nice red back here behind the car and you'd see that more as well. Let's check the car over again, it's all good. If you really wanted to, you could get rid of this as well with the uh, patch tool or one of the other ones, but I'll just leave that reflection for now. So that's cleaning it up. You could get rid of this reflection altogether, but I'll just leave it as well, just from that. You know what, I'll get rid of it. One thing to look out for as well as the uh, lines in the car where the doors and stuff meet. Uh, it can be quite tricky because it's, you know, you want to keep that line there so it can be quite tricky sometimes to remove objects from a car's reflection that go over this line. Because um, it's a white car and it's just this, it should be pretty easy. But sometimes it can can be quite tricky to do that. In this line. So this is one of the um, guidelines on the ground for the car park, one of the white lines, and it's just a reflection of it. Now obviously we got rid of that line on the road so people would kind of look at this. You know, if, if anyone was going to zoom right in and have a look they'd probably notice. Not that anyone does that. But yeah, always check reflections when you remove something and make sure it's not still in a reflection as well. Cool. Now, um, with the car, now it's all cleaned up. We can dodge and burn. 
um, and make um, the groove stand out more. So what I'll usually do for that um, is I'll get a curves layer and I'll bring it down just a little bit. And if you go control I and invert the mask to black, it'll get rid of it. Get your brush, uh, make sure it's nice and soft. And if you make it white, um, you can paint it back on. So you can choose where to make it darker and you can kind of go over any body lines that are in the shadow that are dark like this. And it will make those body, line, body lines stand out a bit more. This little groove here. And it really, doing this, you don't have to do this. Um, it will, it'll definitely make a difference. Um, yeah, people won't be able to point it out that you've done it, but uh, it, you know, they'll wonder why your photo looks um, so good. So we along the bonnet. But yeah, you don't want to make it too dark um, because it can look a bit funny. If it doesn't blend properly, like it's still got to look like the natural light. I can see that for an example. Um, it's way too dark for that area. So you can also turn the opacity down on your brush if you're not sure, and that way you can kind of slowly, uh, slowly add that shadow. And then you can also do the same uh, with light, so you can make another curve layer, make it brighter, and then you can go over the highlights as well. But I'll just do the shadows for this one, especially because it's a white car. If it's a black car, you can do the opposite. You can use like the white, um, and you can go over highlights. You can add like body lines in and stuff like that. Headlights a bit darker. So just adding those body lines a little bit. It's mainly just the front, the front bumper here. Before, after, such a small difference. But it's just another thing you can do. I hope I could teach uh, some of you something from this video. I hope you learned something. Um, even if you knew most of it, you might have picked up one or two new little tricks. Um, Hopefully it's not too boring for you, but yeah, if you want to check out the full set, um, follow me on Instagram and you can find the photos there. Um, I'll also put a link in the description for the raw files so you can edit this photo yourself. Uh, and yeah, if you want to see more videos, um, let me know what kind of tutorials you'd like to see. And um, I will be doing more soon on, you know, shooting cars at different angles. And, um, I have done, the only one I've done so far is a rolling shot tutorial, which probably needs updating. Uh, it's quite old now but it's still pretty accurate uh, but yeah let me know what you want to see give me a follow uh, give me a follow on instagram and you know hopefully i will talk to you guys soon send me some photos too if you want uh, if you have any photos yourself that you want you know some critique or some feedback or if you do have any questions um, just uh, comment below or even better just send me a message on instagram uh, and you know, i'll make sure to get back to you uh, I'd love to see, you know, some of the, the edits um, that you guys do to this, if you do edit this photo. Um, and yeah, peace out. Thanks for watching.